19th at 7 p.m. Please rise for the invocation given by Councilman, Councilwoman Sarah Lacido. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, we thank you for the many blessings you provide us. Please guide all of the people of our city, state, and country to be more compassionate, understanding, and welcoming of one another. Let us all work to together to become the best that we can be. It's in your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonaco. Present. Councilperson Lucido. Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld. Here. Councilperson Marion. Here. Mayor Pixley. Here. And with that, we'll move to the first hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard at this time? Please um, step forward and state your name. Good evening. My name is Ernestine Mason. Can you bring the microphone down so we can hear you? Thank you. Okay, great. My name is Ernestine Mason. I am a homeowner at 15386 Juliana East Point, of course. This past weekend, Saturday, um, July 16th, we had uh, the neighborhood, our block, between Crusade and Brock. We experienced uh, a disturbance, if you will, from the commercial building that <clears throat> runs south and north, uh, also known as the old uh, Kmart building. Uh, the manager and some of the employees attempted to put up a carnival, if you will. They put up a, a slide, a giant slide, two of them. I have the pictures, which brought a lot of uh, children from Detroit and children from down on Universal. And it was, it was just a horrible experience. And they had a disc jockey out there. And while they were putting the stuff up, I went to the manager and asked him not to do this. And I explained to him, this is our home. This is a residence. Why can't you put it, if you're going to put this up, he said he was doing it for the community. Well, there are no kids on our immediate block. And this is a, you know, this was something they were doing for their commercial benefit. And our position, the residents, is you should have done this in the perimeter of your commercial building, not out in our residential area. They were playing a, a disc jockey. They had a disc jockey and they were playing loud uh, rap music. And we have, in our block, we're senior citizens, okay? And the few young people that we have, they're, they're working adults. They work, you know, people, it's a residential area. I just think it was inappropriate. Uh, some of my neighbors are here, and uh, we just need your support to ensure that this does not happen again. They have another one planned. And uh, initially, I did call the police. The first officer said that he couldn't do anything because it was private property. But I called. The second time, because I, we were really upset. And so the two officers, they came out and they made them shut it down and they said they were gonna ticket them or what have you, but they did what they, they were supposed to do in the beginning. And I thank them and I support them and I love East Point Police Department. They come when I call them and I've never had a problem with them. So, and I thank them so much because that was really upsetting to us. And I have some pictures to show you Can we just see a show of hands of how many other people are related to this problem? And you all live on Juliana? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Thank you. And then did you also want to speak? Yes. Just step forward into the microphone. Yes. Good afternoon. And for the council. Just state your name. Katie Lewis and I live in the 1500 block of Juliana, and I appreciate you hearing our concern. 
My concern also is that these children, they were riding their bikes, turning around in our driveways and are uh, whirling around and God forbid one of them get hurt or something on our property and this is what's a safety concern and there were no supervision of all of these children running around. I only saw one person out there as an adult. So that is a concern of ours as well. Thank you for hearing our concerns. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Patricia Brewer and I also live on Juliana. Patricia, um, could you just speak real closely into the microphone so okay. the secretary can get your name? All right, Patricia Brewer and I also live on Juliana and I called uh, with the same concern as my neighbors uh, because it was of concern to me that a slide, a huge slide and a bounce house was being placed in back of the building instead of in front of the building. And um, the concern was is that a lot of, we would have a lot more people coming in. Unfortunate, fortunately, at this time, there weren't as many, but I understand that there's going to be a second event, and we really don't want that uh, you know, on our street. Our uh, street is very quiet, and we take care of our homes, and we just don't want that element there. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Mrs. Williams. I'm at 22097 Birchwood. I'm concerned about the fence uh, that came into effect. Um, my neighbor um, had got his, uh, put his application in in December and it got stamped on February the 1st um, and then he didn't get his permit until February the 3rd. And with um, the borderline, it was February the 3rd, it came into effect. So he should have asked the neighbor, you know, to put the fence up. Okay, I went to all the protocol to try to get it taken care of. Um, and they told, they asked me to get a survey, which I got the survey and the survey, uh, my survey guy shows that the fence is in and out. It's not up there right. And he couldn't say that it was mine or it was his. Okay. Then they sent the city sent a second guy out and he also said that, uh, he said the fence is uh, up there study, but he can't tell me who property it is, okay? It's gonna cause the big problem. He damaged my flowers, the guy did. He got dirt at the bottom of the um, fence and all the dirt is coming over to my yard. I have talked to Mary about it. I have went to the clerk manager about it. I even, uh, hired me a lawyer because that I wasn't getting anything from the city because when he came in and did his application in December, why would he get a permit in February? And, and it was stamped on February the 1st. So I have a question about that. And then he didn't even say anything to me that he was taking the fence down. Now, and it didn't, it amazes me that he could do what he wants. Like Thursday, he was out there putting windows and stuff in, in his yard, you know, and I have to stay there. And I, when I come into my house, that's a blind for me. Anything can happen, you know? And I don't know how they could approve of him to get a permit, and it was an inside because, I, like I tried to tell Mary and tried to tell um, uh, David, and um, it was David and Denise that approved him of uh, the permit, and he was and the his the uh, my neighbor um, is friends with David and Denise. They goes to his. Um, barber shop and get their hair done. 
So that's how it came into effect because you're going to wait till December to fill out the application and then it, it then you're going to get approved in February when it um, came into effect on February the 3rd. So ma'am, we, we only allow three minutes to okay. speak. Um, so your three minutes are up right now. Okay. But we will follow up on your problem and see if we can work out some kind of a solution, okay? Okay, thank you so much. And thank you so much for coming forward. All right, bless you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to be heard over here? My name is Jane Antone, and I live at 22110 Boulder. I live across from the infamous Chuck and his house. I don't know what the deal is as far as, you know, like they threatened to, you know, um, take it down. And as a resident there for over 30 years, I just think it would be such a shame. It's enclosed now. It looks good. We've had a look at it through this other time, and it didn't look so good. It does look now. I just don't understand why you would tear down a house that looks like that does right now. That's all I got to say. Thank you, ma'am. Does anyone else wish to be heard, sir? Evening. Please Hi. state your name. Brenda Jackson, um, I live on Beaconsfield. And as you know, last year they did our street with the sewer and the gas lines and everything else. But in the process, after they finished, they had to take out a slab of my driveway. And they replaced that one, but in the process they damaged another one. And I did make it known to them before they left last year that it was damaged and a guy marked it for me. And he said some, he marked that, and he marked some other sidewalk squares that they had damaged. And he said someone would come back out to repair them. They came out and repaired the sidewalk squares, but they didn't repair that big block in my driveway. So I called again this year, and I spoke with Ron Dembski with the city of East Point several times. He came out and looked at it. He said he would have to send someone else back out. So a guy named Steve Pangori, from Anderson, Eckstein, and Westrick came out and looked at it, and he said he would get back with me, and I haven't heard anything since then. So I wanted to know who was coming to repair that big block of cement because I shouldn't be responsible for it. So um, would you be sure and leave your name and your address over here with Linda, and okay. we'll follow up with that. All right, then, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to be here in the back? Hello, my name is Ballard Speech. I have a question. How is it possible for Spindler Park to flood every other year? You do work in that area and the basements keep backing up. Taxes don't go down, taxes keep going up. And I'm quite sure the residents in that area pay their taxes why can't we get some satisfaction and get something done about the flooding thank you sir can you leave your address and your name with Linda please Not a problem. thank you does anyone else wish to be heard uh, sir my name is uh, Saul and I live in East Point also um, I wanted to just speak about, I uh, contacted the Attorney General for the State of Michigan concerning the recent 14 mil 20 year increase. Um, I keep reading in the East Sider newspaper that we raised $5 million. You didn't raise $5 million. You took the money out of the pockets of people who can least afford it. When I got my property tax bill, 
which I have to be, I have to pay obviously. I'm not happy about that at all. And now we're talking about bringing another city in. I don't think we're doing it, or politicians are doing it, out of the goodness of their heart. I've never heard of a 14 mil, 20 year increase. We also read, my wife and I, about a $40,000 um, bill for mailings. 40, I barely live on 40,000 a year. So when I keep hearing over and over again what a great thing this millage increase was, and it's way too late to do anything about it, the election was held on one of the coldest days, the, on one of the coldest winters in history, and it's still barely passed. How is that a great thing? I think Steve is the author of it, I'm not sure, but I'd like to ask him, how is that such a great thing? I mean, I'm sure you make 150000 a year. It would be easy for you to come up with 14 mils. Ask me how, with barely 50, with a family of three, this is a great thing. That is a question. We are allowed to ask questions, right? How is that a great thing? But we can't answer it while you're speaking. Okay, I'm not speaking now. Uh, we, we have to. The council only can answer at the end, but Mr. Duchesne may be able to address part of that during his report. Well, not now. Not while you're up here. I ask, answer, I ask one more thing. How come in the city of East Point, everywhere I see, look, I see black residents, but I never see black policemen? What's going on with that? We have one? Oh, I did see that in the Freedom of Information Act. How can we have only one black policeman? I guess Mr. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve will, will address that too. Correct. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else wish to be heard? Ma'am? Oh, you can only talk once. Mm -hmm. But you can talk at our second hearing of the public. Cool. In the back? Mm -hmm. um, you already spoke. Yeah. You can at the next hearing of the public. Anyone else? Ma'am. Hi, my name is Diana Hauer. I live on Dijon in East Point. And also have a concern about flooding. I'm sorry, what street? Dijon. Okay. Okay, had a um, water coming up out of the toilet in the basement, sewer water, not rainwater. We have two sump pumps. We have a um, waterproofing system in our basement, so naturally um, carpeting, furniture, paneling, everything destroyed. And uh, very concerned that this, um, we've lived in this home for 40 years, and that this has happened since the, what used to be the CSOs, Combined Sewer Outlets on Beaconsfield, um, last year were replaced supposedly with two separate systems, one handling the sewage, one handling the water runoff. So if that was the case, then a three inch rainfall in a short period of time really should not affect the sewage, okay, if they're going separately um, through the system. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Does anyone else wish to be heard at this time? Anyone else? Seeing none, the first hearing of the public is closed. We'll move on to approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of July 5th, 2016. Do we have a motion? Madam Mayor, I make a motion to approve the minutes, regular minutes of July 5th, 2016. Support. Who we'll support? Any corrections? Please call the roll. Councilperson Marin? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Abstain. Mayor Pixley? Yes. We have no scheduled hearings, no unfinished business tonight. We'll start with reports from administration. We'll start with our city manager, Mr. Duchesne. Thank you, Mayor Pixley. Um, I did want to, and uh, the gentleman brought up the uh, Sporsa and 14 mills. do want to remind the voters that Wayne is uh, uh, applied for membership in Sporsa. Uh, that vote does come up on August 2nd, and as mentioned, 
Everybody in East Point and Hazel Park has to agree to let Wayne participate. Um, it is not any impact for us. If it's voted down, it simply doesn't allow Wayne to participate. If it's approved, Wayne would participate, but of course, the millage goes into effect for them. Um, I think in addressing the 14 mills as we did before the voters that went past it, and of course, 61% of them here and almost 70 in Hazel Park approved it. The issue and the condition that the city had was simply it did not have the money generated due to losses in revenue sharing taxable value to continue to operate. We'd made three years or more of reductions, and at that time, this was the one option that was left because state law didn't allow us to raise other revenues, and it certainly has been a consistent 10-year decrease in state shared revenues going to it. I take no you know, pride in a tax increase. The issue had to be done. It is not like there is an option or the city, and if you follow our council meetings, you realize that we are even in the process of supporting a lit uh, litigation against the state of Michigan for not properly funding cities. So I uh, certainly don't take uh, any great happiness in doing so, but it was a necessary outcome of years of reductions, wage cuts and changes in service levels that the city could ill afford to do any more when that was placed on there uh, that the voters did approve. Unfortunately, uh, moving on to another subject about storms, uh, we did have a storm event of three inches in 30 minutes. Uh, there is no system failures, but to reach maximum capacity, the one failure that we have discussed was uh, more on the west side of the city when they, the Warren pump station uh, did not properly function and ended up putting raw sewage into the streets at Nine Mile and Beachwood. Unfortunately, until that pump station has either improved, modified in some manner to operate more efficiently or increased, we're going to unfortunately have that happen during high water periods of time. There is um, work in progress to work with the city of Warren and council has been engaged in that for uh, better than a year now since prior event happened. So that is one area that a system, not directly ours, wish it was in some cases because we could immediately fix it, but that is impacting the East Point system as we go forward. Uh, those two things we, we certainly have in discussion as well as um, the uh, issues of construction that are underway have been mentioned here tonight. We have uh, a, a large projects in sidewalk repair and replacement, and as mentioned, a driveway from prior. Those things uh, we will have, the uh, engineers are aware of uh, some of these. We have some warranty work orders to do, and we'll ensure those are added to it. Um, the only other comment I make, again, reminding of the, uh, the election of the primary of August 2nd for everyone. I think the other comment was made, uh, why don't we have more black police officers? All I can say is I'm hiring. I, uh, I recently have engaged a gentleman who was a fine, outstanding officer, and applications are open. We are never filled in the police department anymore because of the number of people that apply and our backgrounds and the checks that we go through has given us some fine, high quality officers, but there just simply aren't enough people interested in being police officers today and applying. We're gonna to continue to pursue it, so um, applications are available and we are more than willing and ready and I certainly, as well as this uh, council, is committed to do that. And I think with everybody's help, I think we can adequately represent the city in all ways. And I believe we are on that track to do that. Um, that's all I had, Madam Mayor. Do you want to make any comments about the eight mile, the slides that were up there? <clears throat> the shopping center issues, I, I, Director Van Heeren and I, we, we certainly, I'll let Mary comment too. That is very upsetting. I do not know that shopping center has had other issues before and activities they've had. We've had some buildings issues, trying to have parties inside. I'm very sorry about that. I can't believe that they put that out on your street like that. That is just ridiculous. We obviously will be taking some further action with those people and property owners there and 
people who rent space there. Yeah. I, I'm very concerned about that. And, and I'll say that when these folks came <coughs> in today and let us know about that, um, I immediately got off a letter to the prop or to the business owner as well as at, at the business location, as well as the two that are registered with our clerk's office to their homes, one in Detroit and one in, in East Point, and let them know that, that this sort of activity cannot take place without the city council approving a special event. And I gave them copies of the application and mentioned that I understood they had another event planned and they were not to hold that event unless they got approval from the council. And like I said, gave them copies of the application. So. I, I know we don't comment back and forth, but let me say this, that is all wrong. <laughs> we will never approve officially of any conduct out on your street behind a commercial building. That is ridiculous. So um, thank, thank you for bringing it up again, but Mary is certainly um, aware of that and we will, we will vigorously pursue that. And I'll make sure everybody in the, uh, the enforcement departments are aware of that too. So does anyone else have questions for the city manager? Yeah, in your last weekly brief within the packet on part of the DDA, uh, I see that there was an invoice in there from partners concerning the wayfinding signage, and uh, that invoice was uh, from May 16th. Is that a dead issue? Are we still looking at this? or? I'm sorry to say it's right now it's a dead issue. The bids are all expired. Uh, okay. We did have to pay for the design development of wayfinding um, because they did do that work, but uh, we, we're taking no other action. Well, the council had a lot of questions, and I thought administration was bringing it back up once all the questions were answered from that our meeting. That is not our understanding. That's not a discussion we had at all. Council did not support it. The DDA didn't want to proceed with that either. I haven't spent any money. It would have been only if it makes sense to put it together. And the changes are structural in many cases, and there was a concern voiced by the council when it was uh, not approved um, that we're talking about not spending the money for the signs at all. So we would have to revisit it. The bids are expired. We're, they were shortly going to expire at that time. So we would really, we have the base information. We could start that over without more work by partners, but Could without we redesign. take that information that is already accumulated and disperse that to council so that we might be able to look at that and come up with an idea of how we might want to approach this in, in another fashion or another portion rather than maybe the whole project? Because I think that was part of the issue that I think there was a misunderstanding or a need for part of the signage that was within that package. But I think some of the signage that, that we need for like the parks, I think there's absolutely imperative that the ones that we have, uh, they're constantly out there fiddling with them, trying to keep them together. And based on the condition of some of them, it just doesn't give a nice appearance. But I'd, I'd like to at least, we've already got the time and the energy and the design into this. Let's let's. So if, Take all of, a look at this again. if all of council agrees to that, or the majority of council, then we can bring that back and review it. Well, I'm happy to have the discussion because obviously I, I, I really feel that as in certainly travels around the state recently, wayfinding and placemaking is still a very popular and, and when done properly in coordination, it gives people direction. I'm also concerned, uh, Mr. Marion mentioned a few signs that are pretty bad shape and are falling over. There's also an entrance sign or two that are gonna go down pretty soon. And we, in fact, one is collapsing there at eight mile that won't be, we can't shore it up too much more. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to bring it back. The only thing is, of course, again, we can use the prior numbers and things, but if we go back out to bid, we'll have to have a discussion about how much, you know, what the cost benefit break is on those things to do that. but. We can, resub we can find our old package. I know we sent some electronic versions. We had uh, some presentation material in the big mm -hmm. sheets and things. We can see if we can uh, recycle that and bring that back to you. Uh, give us a couple weeks on that. I'll have to sort through it and see what we can do. Can we also look at Kelly? I think Kelly is um, devoid of signs. 
and locations for a lot of the businesses there. And um, I think it's time now that we've finished all the construction that we perhaps put together some signage for that street. Sure, we, we didn't have a final design on it, but there was discussion about having that sectional, like all the businesses on more or less blocks or sections in there, so we can take a look at that. Sure. Business is really improving along Kelly in certain stretches. Sure, I'd be happy to uh, give us a little little time on it, and we can re, I guess, reformulate the package again, and then go from there with discussions with you. I'd, I'd like to look at that. Anything else for city manager? I had one one item, uh, Madam Mayor, about uh, saw it in the. Macomb Daily, and I know it's been talked about for a long time. I think Mr. Duchesne, you've even talked about it, is the compost issues we have in Macomb County. Mm -hmm. Can we find out what um, Rizzo is actually currently doing with our composts? Because uh, it sounds like there is no place right now in Macomb County to take it, and it's either put in a uh, put with the garbage or taken down to Detroit, is what it sounded like in the Macomb Daily. I just would like to know what's going on and what possibilities we have and so just we haven't so we know what's going on with our own compost be happy to have Rizzo uh, indicate they are you know as a contractor of course we we don't direct and, and um, uh, have a challenge to where they put it because they're they're fulfilling terms of their contract but we can certainly ask what they're doing with it presently and what their objectives are okay not a problem appreciate that besides dumping it in the street. <laughs> well, I got word on that today. They're going to set the cans up right um, at, per our request and discussion. Uh, they do have some, they did have some good reasons indicating to me why they turned the cans over on the composting. Um, they felt two, one, it makes it known what cans were addressed, to which who? were picked up to their workers. But wouldn't they know that after they went down the streets and there's no paper bags out there either? Well, the problem is that most people put it in here of can. I mean, they, they place it in a bag or they do something, but there are still people who freely put clippings openly in the can, so it's a loose material. And if that material sets at the bottom, gets old and stale, then it's crusty and it becomes smelly and that. So they, they found over time their practice is better to turn it over in that case um, and they are, they're aware that sometimes it's left on the street and people don't pick that up. Uh, they don't pick it up. They, they basically believe when they turn it over, they've emptied the can to the best of their ability. Some falls out later. But the bottom line is, in the conversation, is they are instructing their personnel to set it up right in East Point, and we'll see how it goes. Appreciate it. Anything else? Yep. All right, let's move on to our finance director, Mr. Plum. Welcome back. Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, uh, the one item I had tonight is um, we did receive our first actuary report from MERS. It has been posted on the website in the transparency section, so I didn't provide any hard copy. Uh, it's 46 pages with a 31-page appendix. So, <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's available electronically. Um, I did want to highlight, <clears throat> excuse me, highlight that the um, Funding level did drop from 57.2% down to 53.9%, which had been anticipated because they use a uh, shorter period for um, covering the unfunded liability. And it will continue to decline one year at a time until they get it down to a 15-year recovery period. Um, so like I said, that was anticipated. The unfunded liability increased about six million from 31.8 million up to 37.7 million. Um, again, it was not unexpected with the way they do the calculation. And our annual pension payments will increase about 309,000, but that's actually a little bit less than we had budgeted. So um, I'm wondering um, what percentage are they using? The uh, earnings, mm -hmm. they use 7.75%, and we had been using 8 Yeah, so it's a little bit lower rate of return. They are using 3.75% wage increase. They had lowered it back when everybody was taking pay cuts. They are now going to ratchet it up at um, a quarter of a percent per year till they get back to the 45 that had been the norm. Um, and what's their smoothing? They, do a five, they just changed from a 10-year to a 5-year smoothing. Mm -hmm. So they're back to where we were. So. Uh, okay. 
All right. And that was all I had. We can download that 61 page report. Sure you can. <laughs> Put it on a tablet and carry it with you everywhere. <laughs> all right. Anything for the finance director? No. All right. Let's move on to our city attorney, Mr. Albright. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, when I was at court this morning, I received a telephone call from an attorney representing the uh, owner of 22117 Boulder. I returned uh, the attorney's telephone call today and he indicated that he had been retained uh, and that he was planning on filing a, a circuit court action uh, um, sometime this week uh, to essentially enjoin the demolition of that uh, house, which has been the subject of a, a long running uh, dangerous building hearing. I advised the attorney that he could uh, serve uh, our office and I would acknowledge service uh, with the with the pleadings, once I do get a copy of the uh, complaint, I'll certainly forward a copy to uh, to city administration and also uh, get with uh, both uh, Mr. Duchesne and Ms. Van Heeren uh, regarding how city administration wants to proceed. And just to remind the council also, there will be uh, four dangerous building hearing properties uh, for the uh, for the next uh, city council meeting, which will be the second uh, uh, week in uh, August due to the primary. And that's all I had. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions. You're not going to report any additional funding that would come from that long lawsuit? Uh, not at this time, Your Honor. All right. Anything else? All right, let's move on to new business, and we'll start with item A, the approval of the vacation of the utility easement for White Castle. Do we have a motion? Madam Mayor, I'll motion to <coughs> approve the vacation of the sanitary sewer easement contingent upon the completion of the proposed project and authorize the city manager to execute all documents related to this vacation and record said document with the Macomb County Register of Deeds. Support. Move support. I just had one question on this. Um, you mentioned the AEW report, but I didn't see it in here, so. And they didn't submit a real written report. They sent me an email. Okay. And this <clears throat> has also been reviewed by the planner. It has been reviewed by the planner as well as the um, AEWR engineering the architects, plan. yes, or firm. So does White Castle pay for this? Then? Does White Castle pay for it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the cost of the easement relocates, all of that is at the uh, petitioner's cost. Just double check it. Right. I think we got a dollar out of it, actually. Yeah. Actually. Well, yeah, there's, you know, <laughs> we did profit mightily by that. But. A few sliders here and there. This was making sure I was reading that $1 part correctly. <laughs> All right, please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Item B are special event applications. These are what happens is these people submitted a special event application. All right, the first one is from the Spirit of Christ Ministry Church, and this is for a free clothing giveaway. Madam Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve the request from Spirit of Christ Ministry to hold a free clothes giveaway event on Saturday, August 6, 2016 from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Support. Move to support. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. The second special event application is for the Oasis International Church, um, and their event is called Breaking the Darkness. We have a motion for that. All right, who wants to read that paragraph? <laughs> <clears throat> Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the request from uh, Oasis International Church to hold a Breaking the Darkness event on Saturday, August 27th, 2016, from 4.30 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, August 28th, 2016, from noon to 4.30 p.m., with the following conditions. One, the tent must comply with the adopted fire code, section 2401. Two, the organization must obtain a permit from the building department for the 20 by 30 uh, foot tent. Three, according to IFC, uh, 2009-2402.20.2, uh, they need to have one trained crowd manager and four, the organization must comply with the Macomb County Health Department for a temporary flood license since the food will be prepared at the event. Support. Move to support. Any questions on this? Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? 
Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. And item three is from Papa John's um, for their community celebration. We have a motion on that. Madam Mayor, I make, make a motion to approve the request for Papa John's to hold a community celebration event on Wednesday, July 20th, 2016, from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. Support. Who support it? So after this is approved, are we uh, giving them a call like right now? <laughs> yes, it's for I already spoke to them. Okay. So between 11 and 2 tomorrow, they're giving away free pizza and drinks. Oh, free pizza and drinks. Everyone's welcome. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone's welcome. Yep, everyone's welcome. Please call Thank the you, roll. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Sorry, I get excited about the pizza. Item C is the adoption of resolution number 1818, authorizing the issuance of 2016 refunding bonds uh, with a limited tax general obligation. Anyone want to speak to this? You want to introduce it? Our Patrick McGowan uh, from Miller Canfield, our bond council is here. Uh, I think, uh, Pat, you want to do an over, overview and then uh, take questions, if any? Sure, great. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Uh, what you have before you tonight is a resolution which would authorize the refinancing of the bonds that were issued back in 2007 to make the improvements to this building. Um, this is a similar process to refinancing your home mortgage. Um, essentially, when these bonds were issued, uh, interest rates were at a certain level and the original bonds were issued in 2007 uh, they provided they could not be called early for the first 10 years so we're getting close to that ability to call the bonds and interest rates today are much lower than they were when the bonds were originally issued so uh, the action item is for the issuance of bonds uh, to refinance the old bonds similar to the way you would refinance your mortgage the city would issue new bonds to pay off the old bonds and those old bonds will be retired when they're callable in 2017. Uh, the one little difference, I think, com when you, compared to refinancing your mortgage is when you refinance a mortgage, normally you get to pay off your old mortgage at the same time. But again, because here the old bonds couldn't be paid off for the first 10 years, uh, the money from this bond issue is going to be put into an escrow in United States Treasury securities in an amount necessary to pay those off a year from now. Uh, I would say also that the original bond issue uh, was actually issued by the East Point Building Authority, mm -hmm. which is a municipal corporation uh, that cities and other governmental units use to finance buildings. Um, what we've been doing a lot lately, uh, due to some changes in state law, is the city has the legal ability to refinance that debt in its own name. I mean, effectively, a building authority bond uh, has the same credit behind it, uh, which is the city pledges its limited tax full faith and credit to pay the debt service. Uh, what we're finding now is that through some uh, that the bonds refinanced directly by the city make it a little bit easier and it's a little bit better received in the market. So what you have before you then is a resolution which does a number of things, uh, but essentially it authorizes the issuance of bonds to refinance those 2007 bonds in an amount not to exceed $3.6 million. Uh, it then also authorizes the placement agent, uh, which is the financial consultant uh, who will assist with this process, uh, to seek proposals from banks and other financial institutions to buy the bonds and then the city would uh, privately place the bonds with them. So uh, this is a little bit different than the way the original bonds were sold which were sold through what we would call a public offering with an, a rating and an official statement. Uh, many of these refundings now, uh, particularly for a shorter time period, are being done uh, by placing directly with banks after we receive bids. So. Uh, the debt would be for the same duration. Uh, the original bond issue was for 25 years, and this would essentially go out for the same time frame uh, for the remaining uh, about uh, 17 years that's left on this issue. Um, the resolution also authorizes various city officials to take the actions to finalize the terms and then award the bonds to the bidder that produces the best, uh, the best rate. So, uh, this would be the only action item that the city council would need to do in connection with this bond issue and if approved by you uh, that would uh, allow us to move forward with taking bids sometime in august uh, and locking the interest rates at that time so with that i'll uh, stop talking <coughs> and uh, answer any questions that uh, council may have related to this resolution or the bond issue randy you probably remember um when we when the building authority was coming out 
before the building authority came out to get the bonds for this building. We previously had bonds that were set for to cover the old the court building correct and the community center and mm -hmm. something else and didn't we do almost exactly the same thing at that time yeah, we, we went out for we put money into escrow we actually didn't refinance it we just took money out of the general fund or the fund balance and put that into escrow to pay those off so we kind of cleared those so off our books defeat those bonds correct. correct right so that um so we could go out with the lower a better rate of Right. for the bonds correct correct right. and originally for the bonds for the city hall the original cost was four point three four and a half million was the original yeah. issue and there's about three point five million outstanding still so we've done good repair mm -hmm. bills mm -hmm. yeah I think this actually reduces the payment by one year is how we had worked it mm -hmm. we were gonna uh, oh, yeah, you're, you're, yeah we had different options and that was the last option yeah. to shorten it by one year I mean, essentially, we don't know what the savings are, but uh, uh, we'll know that at the time that it's. So you don't know what the rate of interest is that you'll be. Not until we get the bids. I mean, the projections are, though, it's expected to be in the low 2% range, whereas the existing bonds are in the low to mid 4% range. Right. So we were excited to get 4%. Pretty well. significant <laughs> yeah, change in interest rates now versus, you know, seven years ago when these were issued. Okay. So, so do you. Answer my question. I want to know what the interest rates were. <laughs> It, the the projections uh, would project savings of about uh, I think the last numbers run was somewhere in the three hundred fifty thousand dollar range, which translates to about twenty five thousand dollars a year from what you're paying right now. That's just a projection based on where the rates were a couple weeks ago. All right. Do we have a motion? I just had one other question. Um, uh, I was just curious why. Um, in the resolution we have um, nope actually never mind I answered my own thing as I was <laughs> go on sorry so do you want to make a motion sure this is a short one yep. <laughs> <laughs> madam mayor I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number one uh, 1818 authorizing issuance of 2016 refunding bo uh, bonds limited tax general obligations support, support. Really supported please call the roll councilperson Kleinfeld yes councilperson Lucido yes councilperson DeMonico yes councilperson Marion yes mayor Pixley yes thank you mr. McGowan I will move on to the final one under new business, which is the approval of the copier lease with Conica Minolta for various departments. Do we have a motion? Mr. DeMonico, I think you had all your questions answered today. Well, I think they were about to answer some of them. Uh, some were answered. Uh, let's see. I could go ahead and motion, though. A motion to waive competitive competitive bidding requirements due to no advantage to the city and approve the lease agreement with Conica Minolta Business Solutions and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents related to this purchase. Support. From support. Did you have additional questions? So, well, a few of my questions were just, I, I just wanted to know where we currently have the copiers and what usage looked like and like was ink included, things like that. But my main question would be, can we reduce or increase the amount of copiers if necessary over the five years? Mm, it's a term of contract. I'm, I would have to re-examine this one, but generally speaking, um, the amounts were set as part of the price uh, point plan for quantities and the number of units, I do not believe, at least in the last case, we were able to turn them in for a credit once we enter into this. Uh, and I believe that would con be consistent with this one, too. Yeah, I was going to say, on the previous lease, we, we had nine copiers. We closed down the parks operation, and we could not turn that copier in until the lease was up. So we just moved it to another facility and utilized it <coughs> until the lease expired. So reducing it would not be allowed. Increasing, you just go out and go get some new copiers. But reducing it, um, we will be locked in for eight copiers for five years. Do we foresee any, like the parks building, ish? You know, over the next five years. So where where are the eight located then? 
We have what, uh, two here? No, maybe one, two, three. At least three, three that are here. on this lease yeah. there at City Hall. The, you have three here, right? And they are they are also obviously not just copiers. They're scanner fax units and all oh, that. Um, and then the library. library has one. Five building will have one. Yeah. Which building? He said uh, the ten public mile. works, public field mile. operations building. Uh, obviously, police. Correct, Eric. One, one or two. two. So court building. Mm -hmm. And court. Have one. Yeah. Fire. And yes. then fire have one. Maybe not because the clerk is at the police I department. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. No, they may I have. Don't think so. That's eight. They don't get I one. That was seven. On the email, I don't have the email with well, me. There's two at least. Then, right. Three, four, five, summarize six, it. seven, eight. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we did confirm it's two. Where did At PD? They don't get one. They got carbon paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. We move on to payroll and bills. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of one million one hundred eighty-one thousand forty-eight dollars and seventy-nine cents. Support. Who support? Any more questions? Please call the roll. Councilperson Kleinfeld. Yes. Councilperson Lucido. Yes. Councilperson Marion. Yes. Mayor Pixley. Yes. Councilperson DeMonico. Yes. All right. We will move on to the second hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard at this time? In the back, sir. Turkey Towski, I live on Roxana. I just had a quick question, and I, I'm a fast learner. I guess I won't get an answer right away. I mean, I'll get one later. But a street that I think needs to be addressed in the near future, would a homeowner petition on my part help, or would I just tell that young lady over there and bring it to somebody's attention? So. You can let me know whenever I'll be here a little Let while. her know it may be on the list of future. I checked, they say no, but they don't. I thought I saw it on a 10 year list one time, but that was about eight years ago, and it's not on the new list. Mm -hmm. But it, I'm sure it's not the only street that needs help. But So be sure and uh, let her know, and we'll follow Thank up you. on it. Be sure and give her your name and address so we can follow up. Uh, Does anyone else wish to be here? The lady in the back. back on the flooding. Please state your name first. Brenda Jackson. On the flooding issue that we had on Beaconsfield, ours was one of the streets that was completely done with everything. So we were all under the impression that we wouldn't get flooding ever again. But of course, all of the sewage came up through the drains again. So I was wondering if we, if I plug that floor drain, would it stop it? or would something burst or do you know? <laughs> I, you'll have to give that question over there and we'll get you an answer. Okay, because, you know, last, well, in 2014, I had over $10,000 worth of damage. So this time, I'm kind of learning, don't leave anything on the floor, you know, take, take a little bit of extra precaution, especially after he said it's going to happen again. But <laughs> no, I know really take precautions but I didn't lose as much this time as I did before, but I still lost something. So, you know, you kind of get tired of that. Well, you, we were really happy when they said it wasn't gonna happen again, but it did. So leave your question over there with Linda. Okay, all right. Thank you. Ma'am. Ernestine Mason. Uh, we did not receive notification that there would be any street cleaning. There were no signs, no mailings. And um, as a result, there were more cars than usual parked on our street. Our neighbor had some um, lawn work done, and so the contractors brought in their equipment, and uh, people were parked on the street. And then here comes the street cleaner, unbeknownst to us. 
So uh, can we get some kind of notification again, you know, signs posted, maybe in that beautiful mailing that we got, somebody could say, you know, we're going to get a in September or July, second week, uh, first Wednesday, you're going to get some st street cleaning. Thanks. Maybe on our reports. So we okay. stay with the protocol. All right, does anyone else, ma'am? I just would like a little bit of clarification from um, our city manager. I understand that there was a problem on the western border of our city with Warren with a pump failure. How did that therefore affect our neighborhood, which is on the far eastern part of the border, right at St. Clair Shores on I-94, when it didn't flood all of the homes in between that area? Mm -hmm. Does anyone else, ma'am? I have two things. One, about the flooding, okay? When our basement flood, we have to call our insurance in and pay, um, let them pay for our damages and pay for the um, floor and stuff to be done. And I don't think that's fair to us. I think that should be re uh, responsible on the city. And for two, on when the uh, city of East Point is closed, they do, um, they, the neighbors be getting their work done on Thursday, and then when I uh, go and report it to the city, they don't do anything about it. You know, uh, they could get patios and um, stuff done to their porch and everything and don't pull no permit. But when I went to go and have my garage door uh, put up, I had to have a permit. But I don't think that's fair. I think the city should have more inspectors on the weekend and Friday to come around and check people when they're getting their work done uh, before they open back up on Monday. I don't think that's fair. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, I just have another question. Um, I was wondering, the embankment in, two, in 2012 is when our streets were redone on, on Juliana. And some of those uh, embankments where you drive into your driveway were too high, and as a result, uh, your car will drag. I know my neighbors had theirs. They redid theirs so that the car doesn't rub against it. Who is it that I speak with in regards to that in order to get mine corrected? Put your name and your telephone number and address over here and write the word embankment. No, driveway approach. Driveway approach. <laughs> Anyone else wish to be heard at this time? All right, second hearing of the public is closed. We'll move to mayor and council reports. And Mr. Duchesne is asked if he could make a comment, so. Um, yeah, I wanted to respond. I'm trying to think of the one. Well, oh, uh, the, the one would be the storm incident. What I said was the only equipment failure in the area of the system was on the west side and the Warren pump station. Um, no other nothing else failed that we don't have another pump station and and in our case the system and it will happen at times undoubtedly in that when there's that much rainfall in that period of time you get a surcharge from the full system and unfortunately some of the water and sewage moves through us and at the high peak times you're going to get some excessive flows beyond system capacity i've always said it's like taking a 10 gallon pail and pouring it in your sink all of a sudden, it's going to take some time for it to go down because of the run, runoff and the factors that go into that. But that's the only equipment that failed in the area. It doesn't mean that it had a direct proximate cause to your particular situation on the other side. The uh, capacity of the system is always going to be limited by a certain volume. And at this time, there's nothing that failed in the system. The system, and we only actually experienced in that rainfall so far approximately 12 to 15 claims on the water in the basement that had uh, significant backup and problems they are many cases different 
Some are a line problem or what we call a lateral or the service lead from the main into the house. Um, others are just capacity problems and flow problem that the people experience. When I say problem, you can't repair it because you can't engage and expand your sewer system to handle that kind of capacity at times. It just isn't going to be correctable um, in that sense. So that's what we had experienced this time, not area-wide, not backup floodings in, in the grave areas. It was all limited in certain areas and certain re restrictions happened. Some people had line problems also. But in this particular case, uh, the only public system that was a direct problem was the pump station over on Beechwood. Um, and I was going to respond to something else too, but uh, forget what it was now. Maybe one of you will remember. I think that was it. Okay. All right. Let's move on to um, council report, mayor and council report. Mr. Kleinfeld, we'll start with you. Welcome back from your vacation. Thank you. I hope everyone had a, a nice fourth and um, enjoyed the meeting on the fifth. <laughs> Montana was very nice. Um, uh, just a couple of things. I know um, during the hearing of the public there were some comments about the millage. Um, I, I think everyone should recognize that, that that went to the residents and they ultimately voted for it. I voted for it. Um, with the state that our condition that our state is in and how, uh, as Mr. Duchesne said, they're cutting um, money to cities all the time without making the appropriate cuts at the state level. Um, I'm happy to be a fiscally solvent um, city, you know, because I would not want the state coming in and selling everything off in East Point or trying to take over here because that's just going downhill. Um, before I was on council, I served on the Civil Service Commission, uh, which oversees police um, uh, when the scoring and stuff like that for police hiring. And uh, when I was there, it was absolutely true that there was just never enough applicants. And uh, it was mentioned that we only have one black police officer right now. Um, I always wanted to see more uh, minorities involved in that, but you just have to get qualified applicants to apply. Um, and I would urge anyone interested to apply because we're always short. And um, lastly, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. I've gotten a lot of. Um, Uh, wow. A lot of uh, outreach today. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I'm emotional. Uh, you want us to come back to you? <clears throat> I'll get it out. Uh, my mother did undergo surgery today. She found out about a month ago about some um, having breast cancer. And she just got out of surgery right before the meeting. <clears throat> it's doing well, but just wanted to say thank you to everyone. And I don't know why she's doing well, so this is weird, but <laughs> go on. Sorry. She's your mother. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do for my brother, my dad, and I don't know what we're doing for dinner for the next few weeks, so. <laughs> just, uh, tomorrow you can get pizza. We yeah. got yeah. Oh, we got pizza for lunch. You can take your mother pizza <laughs> from Papa John's. Thank you. All right, welcome back. Thanks. And thank you for taking over the meeting. Ms. Lucido, and welcome back to you. Thank you. Um, uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, we always appreciate um, concerned citizens. If you have an issue, we want, we want to have open doors. We like to know what's going on. So I'm happy that everyone came out to inform us. Um, but other than that, all I have is a couple of library announcements. Um, on Thursday, July 28th at 6.30, there'll be trivia with Sandy and Dan Baker. Don't forget to register at the library if you are interested in going to that. And also, they are having a book sale on Saturday, August 6th from 12.30 to 4.30, and Monday, August 8th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. I know I did because I was on vacation. Um, but, uh, but thanks again, like I said, for coming out this evening. Thank you. All right, Mr. DeMonico. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first, I think there's two items I'd like to that I can address right now from uh, the hearing of the public. There was one about the, the gentleman that talked about the $40,000 mailing. 
Uh, we are actually addressing that on the ballot this upcoming primary election on August 2nd. That had to do with special assessments. Essentially what is on the ballot is that we won't have to spend that much. It was in our charter that we had to do this publication in the newspaper or an individual registered mailing, which would have cost even more. So that's why we had to do that. We took action to put it on the ballot so that it'll be a tenth of the cost uh, if ever needs to be done again. And then the second item about the election being cold, it definitely was cold when we voted on SMORSA, but the state has taken uh, a measure to remove February elections. So there are now only going to be May, August, or November elections. Um, and I'm sure if it was cold here, just imagine trying to get to the ballot box in the UP in February. So I think, um, I think hopefully uh, we should be all set then with very cold uh, elections. You never know in you know May or November in Michigan though. And one more thing, a little lighter note here. I'm sure everyone has seen folks walking aimlessly around playing on their cell phones some Pokemon Go. <laughs> And I'd have to say, the one great thing that I have seen out of this, I don't know if most people probably don't even know where Rain Park is. I think it is our newest, most popular park now. There are four Pokestops there. <laughs> if anyone knows where North and South Park are, just north of Nine Mile, uh, west of Gratiot there, just stop by one evening. You'll see about 10, 20 kids just hanging out in the park there. It's just open. It's one of are a couple parks that are a little smaller and there's you know just a couple flower beds and uh, you'll see all kinds of kids hanging out there uh, catching their Pokemon now and you, you might even catch me there. <laughs> Get a life. <laughs> Mr. Marion. Wait 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 hold on hold on. <laughs> just a couple uh, more quick things. Another uh, my wife and I had the honor uh, to marry our friends over the weekend. Uh, Bonnie and Scott, congratulations to them. They had asked us to be their officiants for their wedding, so I want to uh, congratulate them. Alyssa quickly became an officiant online overnight uh, <laughs> so that we could do that. And I also want to congratulate Teresa West for becoming our new chair of the uh, Downtown Development Authority. She's with First State Bank. And then also, as I have already mentioned, make sure to vote in the primary on August 2nd, Tuesday like usual, uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. polls. And um, I would recommend voting yes on the S'mores vote so that the city of Wayne can take advantage of what we did. And as we said, it does not affect our taxes at all if that's a yes or no vote. And then the other vote is on so that we can reduce the cost of the mailing. So I'll be voting yes on that also. And thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Number one, our, our school district was in the news again. Uh, three cheers for the courts, kind of upholding the stay to keep this quote unquote CEO out of our schools. Uh, it's something we don't need right now. They're, they're, they're bringing in an unqualified expert trying to say he's going to be the guy that's going to help us solve our problems. And I think we've already got enough in place to, to, to take care of it ourselves without spending a whole lot of money on somebody that's not qualified to do the job in the first place. So we, the school district needs all the support it can get in helping fight this thing. Uh, hopefully the court's gonna, do, it's gonna side with us and it's gonna stay that way. Uh, right now, they're, they're getting, let them talk to people that our superintendent approves and authorizes him to talk to. Uh, I think that's a, at least the start rather than in saying, here's the keys, go on in, let us know what you can do. Uh, but uh, again, support the school district because that's something we don't need right now. The other thing is a big note to bring up about my dog. We just this past Saturday had a wonderful experience of putting up a gazebo. Uh, if you haven't been by there, you need to check it out. It was a great addition. We had members and patrons that participated in it, and the list goes on with Elizabeth, Tony, and Nino Maribet, Ellie and Mike Nemoff, Joel Harris, who is a friend, 
Bethany and Steve Cohen. We also had Jeff Smith, Catherine Tier, and myself. The 11 of us worked on it for six hours and probably set a record on putting this thing together, but we were pretty organized and uh, we're just thrilled with the outcome of the whole project. And it adds a real nice amenity to the park. Most dogs don't care when it rains, but for the, for the patrons that are standing there trying to keep track of their dogs, it's nice not to be standing there or trying to get sh some shelter under the trees. But uh, it was a nice amenity that we added to the park. So when people ask what we do with the money that we raised from the key fobs, that's what we're doing with it. And we also get some, some donations and contributions at the same time. Uh, the next big one uh, hit that's coming in there, we're looking at adding to, to the agility course. And then we got one other big surprise coming that we'll have to wait to see how that sprouts. But uh, we're, we're, we're hoping for that one coming real soon. And with that, Mayor, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Um, I think the lady has left now that was asking about more additional African-American police officer. Uh, we've been working on this with PACE, and um, this morning we had another discussion about it. Um, we will be having a meeting in September at one of our local churches, and we're asking people to come forward and find out what is required to become a police officer today, because we often have people that apply for the position, but they aren't qualified. But we think that if we let parents know what it takes to be a police officer also in the way of education and different types of testings and so forth, that um, more people would be applying for that position. So our police officers are supporting us with this and we'll move into that and we will be notifying everyone about that. Um, Pokemon Go, uh, I think there's also one in the community garden because suddenly we have an infiltration of the garden and they're not pulling weeds, the, so. Uh, yeah, the urban seed. Yeah. Yep, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> they also are there. Um, street cleaning was the other one that That's right. we wanted to mention. Um, I don't know whether you still want to do that. Well, yeah, maybe just quickly, Madam Mayor. Just uh, The reason we don't uh, post or put signs up for street cleaning is we constantly street clean uh, with our own equipment, and it's an assigned as often as we are able to assign the personnel. Um, that means we are a lot. We take the personnel we have and we assign it when conditions are correct. Um, we do not have a particular route or segments to do that. We do uh, work the streets uh, in a consistent pattern, but oftentimes during interruptions, we'll have to come back and go back and forth with that. But we own our own equipment. We do our own sweeping, and uh, it is done on a continual. And I won't say. Um, non-selective basis, but it is as manpower and uh, time and environment allow us, so that's why we don't post and go, but we'll come back. And if you call us about a street issue or that, we can have street cleaning specialized and, and dictated uh, on a prescription basis. And I think all the ladies um, that were here about the problems on Juliana have since left. One more of you here. But we do have those special event applications. Um, I tried to bring some attention to that. But anytime somebody is going to do an event that requires um, a tent, a larger tent than a 10 by 10, or any of the a large crowd or a noise that's going to be there, they need to come forward and fill out an application for a special permit. And most of those are reviewed by the city council. Um, so we're very careful to protect our residents. So have, if we had known about that, we would have limited the name and the time, probably the, the time and the location and all those types of things. It goes before city administration before it comes to council. So anytime you want to do an event, that's the easiest way. The sooner you can get those applications in, the better it is for you because if there's something wrong with your application, then we can correct it better than having something come up the day before. Having said that, about the day before, tomorrow is Papa John's big community celebration and they're asking everybody to come. So this is Papa John's on, nine, on Kelly Road, right? They moved, um, but they've always been a big supporter of the community. So go on over there and tell them you're there for your pizza. Um, and Mike, you can take one home. So I would also, <laughs> I would like to um, wish your mom speedy recovery. That's really tough. I know she's facing that decision, and so that's really tough on the whole family. 
but um, I'm sure she'll do well. She's one tough person. It's just her kid. <laughs> All right, and Sarah, we're glad to have you back from your vacation. You were, spent lots of time out at two different dude ranches, and yeah, lots of time. <laughs> look, look like you just had a great time. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Support. You have to identify the purpose. Oh, yep. Do we do, uh, just list all three of them, mm -hmm. I'd assume, in one motion here. Yeah. I'll motion then to move into closed session to consider, well, A, consider purchase or lease of real property, B, litigation strategy on the Warren Storm claim, and also C, for the city manager's evaluation. Support. Move to support. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Marion? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Kleinfeld? Yes. We'll take a five-minute break. Mm -hmm.